Hey everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia too, and I'd like to welcome you all to NotFest exclusive interview with George from Alexis on Fire. How's it going? What's good? Uh, well, I'm currently on the tail end of a bout with uh, COVID-19 right now, so you're catching me at home. I figure I could bang out a couple, a couple of interviews mm -hmm. while uh, laying on the couch, pretty much. How, how are you healing up from that? How's that treated you? Some people I know get hit really, really hard, and others kind of are able to glide through it, so where are you at? I feel uh, like uh, I feel bad at how light it's been. It's just mostly been like a bit of a head cold, but really? uh, so yeah, not so, not so bad. Uh, it's keeping me from being productive though, is the yeah. thing. I can't really go out and do stuff. So yeah. Uh, well, just speaking to going out and doing stuff before all this hit, it was really exciting for the band because you actually performed on Canadian soil for the first time in years. So how euphoric and emotional did it feel finally being back on stage in Canada? Uh, it's it's incredible it's it's uh after all this time of you know uh the world shutting down and and you know music kind of going away uh it feels strange to kind of let your guard down we did a a tour of south america that was actually our first uh our first thing back mm -hmm. uh after not touring for two years uh we first show was santiago chile at, at Lollapalooza, and the the sensation there was just like this is the craziest thing ever i mean i haven't played a show in two years here we are in south america playing this massive outdoor festival uh so we kind of had like that build up we 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 played some shows before this one but still being at home having a hometown crowd uh it was it was remarkable it was really nice Oh, that's amazing. There was this clip that went around recently too from one of those recent shows. It was just you yelling on stage. That was fucking dog shit. <laughs> it was during <laughs> a recent one. It was so funny to me. So do you remember exactly why you screamed that? Like, was there an exact moment that triggered it? <laughs> <laughs> there's a part. There's a part in the song that we play called "We Are the Sound" where there where there's like a call and response thing. Yeah. And uh, and so like I usually get the crowd to sing along at one part, and when they're finished. I usually tell them that that it was shit, even if it was awesome. Gotcha. So that's kind of that that was where they stole that from. <laughs> so, yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. live shows are always filled with so many fun moments like that, but also some super bizarre ones. So what would you say is one of the weirdest or craziest things that you've actually seen go down at one of your shows? Um probably like, I mean like there was there was a uh, a guy with he took out his glass eye at the front of the stage and he just like held it up to us like you know like we're sitting there playing and he pulls out his glass eye and just like huh. points it at me that was that was kind of bizarre i can uh, only imagine what was running through your mind in that moment <laughs> the confusion yeah yeah i remember we played it we played a festival in um in Quebec one year and it was right when the mayflies came out these big weird winged things like they're like uh they're like shad flies kind of and they were everywhere all over everything on the amps on like our stage and so you're just playing in this cloud of bugs that was that was another bizarre uh bizarre one yeah that sounds gnarly and not in a good way. I can imagine you trying to just keep going the whole time, like the whole band playing their instruments and whatnot, just swatting stuff the entire time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and oh, crowds, man. yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah, well, it's fun right now because the band not only were back on the road, but you're also back in terms of having an upcoming record called Otherness. And this is the first album in 13 years. So how did that all kind of work behind the scenes? If we were to take the NotFest viewers in, when did you kind of all realize that you wanted to come back and create a new record? Uh, the hardest the hardest thing for Alexis on Fire uh, is getting us all in the same room at the same time. We are all doing a bunch of different things. We all have different jobs outside of the band. And um, uh, one thing, one silver lining to the global pandemic was that it brought us all to Southern Ontario. Uh, and we got about a year deep into the pandemic and we were like, look, we are wasting this opportunity. Let's, let's find some time and safely as we can rehearse and let's try and write some stuff. And we didn't know. So uh you know uh, fast forward to about a month and a half after we'd been rehearsing for a while we had about eight or nine songs we managed to squeeze a couple more out and we booked the studio and and we went in and it was all very like hush hush we didn't let anybody know it was happening yeah and then for about a year straight 
I just walked around with this, uh, you know, uh, this record, just like, just like in my backpack, you know, like just, just knowing that at some point we were going to release a record. It was a very, uh, it was a very nice feeling. Yeah, I can imagine that being nice because kind of like you have something for yourself for for a minute or two, but at the same time, was it kind of killing you inside knowing that you had all these great songs and the new material and you you couldn't kind of unleash it yet? <laughs> it's killing me currently. I, yeah. I want it to be out now. I it's bet. just like the way that the the that we release albums now too, where it's like you know you kind of trickle out songs, all the little singles. Uh, kind of, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's 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 uh it's agonizing for me as I, as I'm sure it is for the fans too. I mean, I'd love to just like put it all out there, but you know, this is kind of how it, how it goes now. We kind of give each song a, a little bit more of a chance to be heard. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad that you brought up the individual singles because one that you recently released is Reverse the Curse and the riff for this track has apparently been around for a hot minute. So were a lot of these songs on the album kind of revisits to older ideas that the band had? Some of them, uh, there, there are a few riffs that were, that have been sitting around for a long time that have been kind of in people's, you know, uh, you take voice notes on your phone and, and collect riffs and, and stuff like that. So there, a few of those were older. That was, I think that the reverse of the curse riff is the oldest one, uh, uh from the record. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it's brand new. A lot of it's absolutely brand new, uh, oh, yeah. material. But uh, there's some some riffs just won't go away. They're just like they're kind of there in the back of your mind. And when you start to when you pick up an instrument, like they just like they immediately kind of come to the guitar, I think. And that was that was this one. Yeah. Is it kind of a nightmare going through all those voice notes? I can only imagine having so many from over the years and realizing, oh, yeah, that's like a hidden gem that I haven't touched on in forever. Yeah, some of them are a hard no, you know, like some of them are an easy. <laughs> It's easy to be like, yeah, no, that there's there's a yeah. reason why that yeah. sat in my voice notes for you know five years. Uh, it's because it wasn't very good. But uh, yeah, some of them are just like earworms. They're just something you can't quite get out, you know. Like, and then usually we find a way. At at some point, they kind of present themselves in a new light in the, mm -hmm. when we're recording and or when we're rehearsing, and they they kind of become what they're supposed to be but yeah no it, you can sit on an idea for a very long time sometimes but the beauty of that is you can finally revisit it and then you have a track like the latest single that came out and it all kind of just you know the synchronicity of it all so that's awesome yeah it's very nice something I liked seeing recently was that fan poll that you all did kind of getting them to choose the 20 essential Alexis on fire tracks of course seeing sweet dreams of otherness at number one sneaking that in there uh, so <laughs> which track for you would you say is the essential one if you were kind of to take part in that poll uh I mean I, I feel like our obvious biggest song would have been uh this could be anywhere in the world from crisis but uh, I mean like young cardinals is one like there's there's a lot there's a there's a lot of songs that i i think are they're like those songs that we it's a no-brainer like they have to go on the set list when we yeah. play you know um uh, accidents is another one you know like there there are certain songs that are just like they're written in granite on our set list like they're just there forever and those are those are three of them anyway no that's exciting yeah. Well, George, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time and for hopping on here today. It's been a pleasure being able to talk about everything that's on the horizon. Of course, very exciting times, so we appreciate it. Uh, it's good talking to you. Have a good one. Same with you. <laughs>